We learned in chapter five and six that one of the main roles of both carbohydrates and lipids is to provide energy to the body. That is not the case with protein. I like to say that we eat protein to make protein. We eat dietary protein in order to get the amino acids necessary to build the various proteins that our body needs for both physiology and anatomy, for both function and structure. So like it says here, one of the main functions of protein is to build body structure. So for instance, our bones are mainly made out of the protein collagen. Okay, and we actually find collagen in so many different structures in the body. Pretty much all organs contain something called connective tissue, and one of the main proteins we find in connective tissue is collagen. Collagen is a protein that when it kind of wraps together and forms these nice organizations, it's got a really good structural integrity that, like I said, can be used to build bones, uh, that then um, minerals can harden, but it can also be found in skin and in other tissues as well that need more structural integrity. Another example of a structural protein is something called elastin. And elastin, we also find a lot of connective tissue. And elastin, what do you think it does? Well, as the name implies, elastin is more elastic in nature. And areas that have elastin in them, they tend to be more flexible. A really good example is your outer ear, right? If I, if I deform my outer ear, it like goes back into place really easily because it has elastin in its tissue. So we find both of these proteins all over the body and the more of, of collagen we have, the more structural something is going to be, more, more strong something's going to be, and the more elastin, the more flexible things are going to be. But these are just two of the many structural proteins in the body. Protein is also really important in transport. Uh, for instance, in our cells, it's hard to even imagine this, but in our cells, we have these little like these little little tracks, these protein tracks, or like little protein walkways that other molecules walk along carrying things. So here I'm carrying things, and here's my little protein uh, molecule. This molecule is actually made of protein as well, that walks along these transport tracks to move things around the cells. Also remember that in cell membranes, we sometimes have protein transporters, and these can act as pores or gated channels that allow things to come into or the cell or leave the cell as well. Another great example of protein as a transport is the protein hemoglobin, which you may know is also referred to as blood protein. Hemoglobin is a protein that has four sites for iron, and each of those sites also has a place where oxygen can bind. So hemoglobin protein allows us to transport oxygen in the, in the blood. Protein is also really important for accelerating the rate of chemical reactions because enzymes are typically protein. Now we've learned about enzymes in chapter three. Remember that enzymes provide a location where things that need to react can dock and then that chemical reaction can occur speeding up the rate at which various chemical reactions occur. Protein is also really important for movement. And the main kind of movement we need to do is to kind of walk our bodies and move our bodies around space. And there are two really important muscle proteins that basically interact in order for our bodies to be able to move. The protein actin organizes itself in this kind of tract that this other protein named myosin has all these little heads. Picture these all these little heads. That's what all these little things are. These are myosin heads. And here's my actin tract, I'll call it. And these myosin heads, they basically bind to actin. They bind to actin. And when they kink their heads, actin shortens. Those actin tracks shorten and basically that can lead our muscles to contract as well when enough myosin heads attach to actin and kink their heads that's actually what causes a muscle contraction and when there's a lot of coordinated muscle contractions occurring at the same time we can do these complex movements that allow our body to move in space 
Another function of protein is that it can function in fluid balance. And we actually learned about this in chapter four when we talked about the movement of water between blood vessels and the extracellular space. Recall that charged substances like protein, which carries charge because there's charged amino acids, these charged substances cause water to be attracted to them and they draw water out of the extracellular space and into the blood, which we then can shunt around the body or eliminate via the kidney. If we don't have enough proteins in our blood, we have less of this drawing effect and fluid can build up in the extracellular space. And if that happens, it can lead to a swelling. So for example, edema is a swelling of the tissues that can occur for a number of reasons, but one of the main reasons it occurs is because there's not enough protein in the blood drawing water out of the extracellular space and into the blood. Protein is also really important for protecting us from disease. So remember that structural protein collagen? Well, that's what makes up a lot of the integrity of our skin, and our skin is a barrier that most infectious agents can't get past. Okay? The only way infectious agents can get into our body is through holes in our skin. And that's why during a pandemic, for instance, it's so important to cover our mouths because those are opening in our skin where infectious agents can come in or go out as well. When infectious agents like bacteria, like viruses, like the one that causes COVID, when they enter into our body, one of our most important protections from them is the creation of antibodies, which our immune system creates. Antibodies are these Y-shaped proteins. So here's an antibody right here, antibody right there. And these antibodies are specific for specific infectious agents. So basically, when a specific infectious agent comes into my body, my body secretes these Y-shaped proteins, and these Y-shaped proteins attach to that infectious agent. And what that basically does is it labels them for removal. It's like, get rid of this one, get rid of this one. We're putting a tag on those uh, viruses or bacteria that tells other immune cells we need to eliminate this guy. Okay. Also, these antibodies cause infectious agents to clump together, so they cause less damage too. Okay, So getting enough protein is important for making sure our immune system and our defense against infection is working at its prime. I purposely am talking about the energy function of protein last, because again, that is not its main function. Protein does provide energy to the body, about four calories per gram, kilocalories per gram. But remember, the process of using amino acids for energy is a wasteful process. Here is a basic amino acid. And for me to be able to get the part of that amino acid that can then go on to go through cellular respiration, I need to cut away its amine group. I need to deaminate it. Okay, the nitrogen containing amine group, I got to get rid of it. And that nitrogen containing amine group is going to be secreted in our urine. Okay, whatever is left over, depending on what's left over, and remember because there's 21 amino acids or 21 potential uh, remaining structures after an amino acid has been deaminated, depending on what's left over, certain of those amino acids, the remaining amino acid structures can be used to form pyruvate, others can be used to form acetyl-CoA, and others can be used to form citric acid cycle intermediates which will then proceed through the remaining stages of cellular respiration to give us ATP. But again, this process is wasteful. So our body would rather use lipids and carbs for energy as opposed to protein. 